scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Let's read Ephesians 4. I'll read verse 10 down to 14. The Bible says, He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might feel all things speaking about Jesus now then the Bible says he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers 12 says for the perfecting other versions like um, maybe standard English or many other modern versions will say the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ 13 it says till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ 14 the last verse that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie to deceive hallelujah the bible very clearly shows us that manifesting the possibilities of this spirit life demands training please i want you to listen very carefully manifesting the limitless possibilities that are captured in this spirit life this faith life this kingdom life we have been called into demands training that in as much as access has been given to us by Christ and through Christ the Bible demands that in walking in the reality of these possibilities there will be need for quality training hallelujah that means the believer even though saved if he does not have access to a teaching priest and an opportunity where he or she is methodically mentored to understand spiritual things chances are excellent that in spite of all the provisions that Christ provides for that believer he may not be able to enter into the fullness of that kingdom experience Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 it says and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart it says they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding hallelujah they shall feed you with knowledge I will give you pastors because of my determination to see you trained so that you will be able to gain mastery over the things of the spirit I will give you pastors according to my heart in Psalm 18 Psalm 18 from verse 32 to 34 Psalm 18 from verse 32 to 34 it says it is God that girded me with strength and maketh my way perfect next verse it says he maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places this is the verse of emphasis now 34 he teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms look at this level of mastery i didn't just assume that state of mastering the spirit that i was taught now by the lord are we together men can be taught to gain mastery 
even over spiritual things very interesting scripture that has become an anthem here is found in acts chapter 18 from verse 24 popular scripture the bible talks about a certain jew called apollos the bible says he was born at alexandria an eloquent man mighty in scriptures he came to ephesus reading to 28 the bible says this man this man was instructed in the way of the lord very powerful introduction his eloquence his might in scripture came as a result of his submitting himself to be instructed in the way of the lord the bible says being fervent in spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of the lord sadly knowing only the baptism of john next verse the bible says he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when aquila and priscilla had heard they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of god more perfectly so from the beginning of his journey even up until the point of mastery he was instructed he was guided are we together someone instructed him to have gotten that far and when other people discern his limitations they lovingly called him and said listen if instruction and mentorship brought you thus far it will be what will advance you further the bible says they called him to themselves and they expounded the way of the kingdom more perfectly hallelujah if we do not have access to training we may never be able to attain onto a state of mastery in the spirit the reason why many believers camp around the corridors of redemption and never press to manifest the realities that are captured in this life we have been called into is because many of them do not have their growth methodical to grow methodically means that you are guided line upon line precept upon precept are we together most believers freelance their understanding about god let me tell you this there is a way the believer was designed to know god and if you route the knowledge of god outside of that pattern your knowledge will be inaccurate are we together i gave an example a few days ago while i was teaching in lagos and i told them i said imagine a student imagine a student that goes to the faculty of medicine to take lectures on monday then decides to go to faculty of arts on tuesday then decides to go down to congo to take another lecture you see there is no knowledge that student is receiving that is a waste but at the end of it that student cannot be accredited and awarded a degree do you know why his met his knowledge is not methodical his freelancing knowledge that are useful but cannot be combined for his overall success this is how many believers are learning god so a little here a little there and it is not line upon line and at the end of it the picture that that template of pursuit gives about god is not complete it's not holistic there is a way the believer was designed to learn god jesus said i am the way the truth and the life he was not just saying i am the way and i am the truth and i am the life he was showing a spiritual sequence that i am the way and when you follow me as the way i lead you into reality the truth and that that truth you know will administer life unto you he was not just saying i am the way and then i am the truth i am the life he was describing the pathway that leads to life that the pathway that leads to life starts from identifying the way and if you follow the way the pattern it leads you to the truth reality and when you carry that substance of reality it will administer life the ultimate goal is life but to access life you start with the way then the way leads you to the truth then the truth grants you access to life are we together you can clearly see the difference between a believer who has submitted himself to training very intelligent training when you keep a believer even though both of them two believers saved 
and you look at the, the quality of their Christian experiences, you would see that one who may have submitted himself to quality spiritual training, the possibilities that come out of that life will differ by far from the believer who is freelancing his or her knowledge about God. Training is very important. Training produces mastery. Training produces mastery. Please do not forget this. Training in any field, this is not just a spiritual concept. Masters are people who have submitted themselves over an extended period of time to intense training. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, this was the pattern we see in the early church. The Bible says, and they, Acts 2, 42, give it to us, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers what was the result 43 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders were done by the apostles verse 44 it says and all that believed together had all things in common they were not just divergent imagine if the believers got saved and everybody was freelancing his knowledge there would be serious confusion within the body of Christ it was that they are coming together to be methodically trained by these chief apostles was what produced synergy in their understanding are we together you see that at the same time when you read your your bible you would see that there was an outpouring of the spirit the early church they were living a community life and growing powerfully but there were certain disciples in acts chapter 19 who were being trained by someone else and all the scope of their training they were clearly in isolation to what was happening and they knew only the baptism of john the bible says paul having passed through the upper coast acts chapter 19 and verse 1 the bible says that he came to ephesus and finding certain disciples disciples they were under mentorship but it was not holistic because they isolated themselves from the larger activity that was happening and he said have you received the holy ghost since he believed and they responded they said we've not even had if there be any holy ghost and paul was surprised he says unto what baptism then were you baptized and they said the baptism of john and he said no 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 the baptism of john was the baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him who should come that is on jesus christ and having explained it to them the bible says that he prayed for them he laid hands on them and every one of them received the holy spirit they prayed in the spirit they prophesied and the number of them were 12. hallelujah you never attain unto a state of mastery in the spirit until and unless you are trained i wrote down here training exposes you to the knowledge required for victory please listen before you write training exposes you to the knowledge required for victory while minimizing error and waste the value of training is that it distills the knowledge that is useful and minimizes if not totally avoiding error and waste now you can write that training exposes you the believer to the knowledge the body of truth required for victory while minimizing error and waste that means it immediately suggests that there are many many spiritual information that are useless as far as the overall excelling of a believer is concerned just because it is spiritual does not mean it is needed in your life are we together the bible has a concise capture of the kind of knowledge you need to learn god and to live a victorious life but the spiritual information found in the bible is not the only spiritual information that exists in the spirit realm you can route through other channels other information at the end of it they will produce something else not god are we together now there are many other books that were written and are still being written spiritual in context but as far as the knowledge of God is concerned, 
and your overall excellence as a believer is concerned that knowledge is absolutely useless but you see when you begin a blind pursuit for spiritual things without being trained and guided chances are excellent you will stumble across a lot of spiritual information that will wow you and for many years you will pride in the accumulation of this information except that they will not sustain the power to administer life the bible says ever learning and never coming into the knowledge of the truth so what did they learn what was the name of what they were learning if they were not coming into the knowledge of the truth it means they were learning a lie it says to be careful what you call light lest it be darkness are we learning training exposes you to the knowledge that makes for your victory required for manifesting your victory while minimizing error and waste Zaria is a prophetic training ground I was sharing with the leaders yesterday where God builds and raises people if you find yourself in this place either as a result of study or work or prophetic instructions I want you to know that God has brought you to a place that is a training ground a training ground means where you are sharpened you gain mastery you may have heard me say it and it bears repeating that the stage is not where you train the stage is not for amateurs are we together now the stage is a testament that you have been trained and vetted and accredited and now God can give you an opportunity to be a blessing even though learning continues but that there is a threshold of mastery that you have gained so that you do not become an embarrassment to the name of the Lord the stage is not for rehearsals the wilderness is the place of rehearsal Moses was being trained in the palace and because the location was wrong the job was bad Moses' training in the palace ended up being a waste God had to relocate him to the wilderness for his training to be proper there were many things because you don't receive training in a palace the wilderness was designed you ask military people they will tell you when you go to the school of infantry they simulate the environment to be able to build capacity am i right on that even though that military man will later become a general and have all kinds of aids around him he may enjoy the blessings when he becomes a general it will be a foolish military man respectfully speaking who would just go to nda and express uh, and want luxury at the same time he wants to sit down on the same chair the general is sitting on are we together it doesn't work that way if you happen to see the training of people in nda you will think those training them were wicked because it looks like there is a messless and brutal training they crawl through grounds they jump through ropes they do all kinds of things even at the point of injury it does not look like the trainer is touched because that's how he became a master himself are we together yes now many believers do not want to submit to training because of our our appetite our appetite for comfort and comfort is a good thing except that the bible says that every man that strives for mastery listen carefully he said he is not crowned unless he strives lawfully nobody wins the olympic by mistake you do not see a world champion an olympian a world champion just strolling around maybe kicking footballs or just moving a few meters and then he goes to stand to compete do you know that everybody that comes to run an olympic final was the best in their locality and yet somebody will still take the last position are we together yes the training of a champion when you come to the school of the spirit there is a way god builds faith in men there is a way grace comes to men watch the way the anointing is made the anointing oil you do not just go and pluck olive and start eating no there is a a, a system of crushing is from that crushing that the oil now begins to come believers hear me let me tell you there is the season that some of us are in now may look like a it may negate the truth of scripture 
because it does not yet appear the things that you read in scripture and your life may not seem to match and because satan is a master of the sense realm he may deceive you into believing that you are not making progress the bible says in romans chapter 8 from verse 18 it says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us are we together even jesus your jesus you would think because he came as the word incarnate supernaturally i mean why would jesus take 33 years as a savior was he that weak to have allowed that length of time you would imagine that you would have even landed as an adult conquered satan if is it not death nail my hand and let me die and resurrect and be on my way out of this place no it's interesting that jesus had to be born as a baby because the last adult God created messed up a lot of things. He came without growth. Now Jesus had to come as a baby and he began to grow. At age 12, the word went to learn scriptures. The word incarnate. The Bible says he went to sit down under the scribes and the Pharisees, learning the things that he would soon abolish, but he still submitted himself. And for 18 years, Jesus was about learning because the Bible would tell us that he entered the temple as his custom was. Are we together now? Submitting himself to training. At age 30, now he's ready for ministry and he goes to meet John the prophet who now baptizes him and releases him. He now further goes to the wilderness again to fast and pray for 40 days tempted of the devil then the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit and the next thing we hear is a manifestation like an inferno he literally took all the decapolis everywhere the value of training are we together and even with that training he almost gave up at gethsemane and yet there are many people who think all there is to destiny actualization is downloading the blueprint of their prophetic destiny and just because you are now aware that you have been called to be a prophet an apostle a pastor an entrepreneur we just imagine that the awareness of the destination automatically guarantees arrival no sir no sir knowing where you need to go to is excellent but building capacity capacity that if you faint in the day of battle the bible says it is because your strength is small are we together so many believers do not submit themselves to training there are many people respectfully speaking jumping and rejoicing god has called me to be a man of god i'm going to go around the world but you look at them and the only thing they have is just the picture of where they are going to there is nothing they are doing they are not walking by the spirit to build the kind of stamina and capacity the bible says an heir as long as he's a child is that in your bible that he differed nothing from a slave but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed hallelujah yes even john who would later manifest as a prophet a major part of his life was in the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey the mother of john did not have the opportunity to enjoy her child how about samuel who later became a mighty prophet that none of his word fell to the ground all his life was spent in the temple do you know what it means to give birth to a child and carry that child and donate that child to god as a baby he slept in the presence of god when his colleagues were running around playing little children there's no record that Samuel had the opportunity to play with other children and other colleagues. A major part of his childhood was sacrificed because of the prophetic destiny. No wonder his word did not fall to the ground. Samuel was such a powerful prophet that if you saw him, it was as though you had seen God. When Saul lost their donkey, they were advised to go and see him. That there is a seer. We know that if we see him, an end will come to this men can become like God when they allow God to train them 
let me tell you the truth you can manifest godlike capacities not just believe not just agree theoretically that you should the experience of that godlike dimension is manifested at the place of training jesus mentored his disciples more than crusades that he had when you study your bible the the crusades that jesus had that were recorded in scripture were countable a major part of his ministry was invested training those who would become the apostles of the lamb and even with that training he still told them tarry in jerusalem in acts chapter 10 in matthew chapter 10 when you read from verse 1 he commissioned them and you would think that was a license to go and start gave them power against unclean spirits and to do all kinds of things verse 7 he says as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand prove the validity of that kingdom by healing the sick by casting out devils verse 8 says cleansing the lepers raising the dead casting out devils freely you have received freely give the bible says they went and they returned with a report they said even the demons were subject to us he said no that is not your pride you just rejoice that your names are written in heaven let the lecture continue and he acted as if they did not do anything to the point that when jesus rose from the dead ascended to heaven when he was crowned king and lord he returned back and it's over a period of 40 days he still gathered them he said let the lectures continue the power of training many believers want to become masters please listen to me this is a very powerful message so that you do not waste your impartation believers deceptfully believe that the anointing generically makes people indefinitely powerful regardless of training no the size of the vessel matters the vessel can reveal the potential of the oil if the vessel is small the oil can look small the problem is not the oil the problem is the kind of container carrying it the prophet said i know the reason why you are having limitations he said go and borrow vessel expand your capacity borrow not a few There are many people who would not allow themselves to be trained by the Spirit. We run away from seasons of training and we clamor for manifestations, especially our generation. Listen, this is a call to be cautious. There is always seed time and harvest. There is always seed time and harvest. When God wants to show you mercy, he can bring acceleration to your seed time. But that seed time, you will pass through it. There is a law of process. When Elisha came and met the woman in Shunem, he told her, according to the time of life, it is still a miracle, but I submit that miracle to the sequence of life. And John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Are we together? training is powerful there are many many business people today who are not able to excel because they had desires and they freelance knowledge but they were not trained there are many preachers today who desire to do so much for God at a global scale their hearts very open but they were not trained blessed are your eyes for they see these things blessed are your ears for they hear these things jesus knew the value of training and he told them tarry and whilst they were waiting over a period of 40 days he still came and taught them on the matters of the kingdom look at the ratio of training to outpouring three and a half years to one day you see that we waste a lot of impartation in church because there are people who are not trained we have flipped the ratio and impartation is happening every day upon people who are completely bankrupt of training so it's just like pouring oil on the ground we may fall and stand up we may shake and shout all of these things may happen and the same people stand up and there is no testament of mastery because there was no training is someone learning yes sir once upon a time the same apostles of the lamb who had now gained mastery laying hold on eternal life as the bible would put it they went to heal an epileptic patient and they embarrassed themselves so painfully it was such an embarrassment and they returned back and said why couldn't we do this jesus 
I thought we were already masters and he looked at them paraphrasing there is still a lot you need to learn there are many kinds you are now learning the kind you met on your way there was a dynamic that you engaged that made the demons go remember they were happy even the demons were subject in your name and they still use that formula and for this case it looked like nothing happened and jesus said there is something the problem is not the demon there is something that needs to happen to you jesus i know paul i know the demons never question power the demons never question the name the demon questioned the individuals administering the power it was not he said jesus i know there is a testament in the spirit we know the name even the demons know that name and they tremble but someone else comes to use that same name i adjure you by jesus and the demons say it doesn't work like that leave this place how do you call the name of jesus correct jesus genuine name and a demon beats you is that not a lesson to learn that means the name is not a charm there is something there is a level of understanding that the vessel administering that name must have to release the power that is locked in the name watch this i can carry this phone and give one of our little ones here and he can be holding a phone that has capacity to do so much but because of ignorance either by age or knowledge the person can be standing with a phone and not be able to make a call and you will wonder look at this person is shortchanging himself or herself because the vessel really matters listen I know that we are focused on the various forces that provide victory for the believer but we need to concentrate on the vessels who will administer that if the vessels were not important Jesus would just die resurrect and just choose people he would not choose people before after his uh, before his resurrection he would choose them after his resurrection after all it did not matter only the name or only the blood but he began the training while they were waiting for all of these forces of redemption to be given to them preacher it will not just happen just by opening your bible and closing it and then declaring demons leave you may be disappointed like stated in the bible it may not always be just by believing that things will just manifest like that there is a capacity requirement are we together now a capacity requirement and that comes through training because there are some of us part of the global missions that will usher in the Christ some of us God is preparing us right now in this training ground and God is going to be sending you like the foxes of Samson across the nations of the earth but you will be a casualty to the body of Christ if you are not trained you see the lopsidedness in your training will be evident by the time you manifest if you don't stay to be trained properly the areas that you did not cover in your training will be very evident there will be a widespread lopsidedness for instance if you are trained in prayer and you are not trained in other dimensions how the provisions of god comes are we together how to access favor from men you will be surprised that by the time you start ministry you will be a mighty prayer warrior but poverty will make you look as if you are fake and you will be surprised i am praying i am sincere why are the supplies of heaven not coming or reverse the case you may be properly taught in the area of accessing the wealth of the kingdom and you will find out that your spiritual life is lean you do not have power and capacity in the spirit one manifestation of darkness will take everything you have accumulated over a lifetime because there was lopsidedness in that training is someone learning we are called to gain mastery we are not called to guess the precepts of the kingdom that make great are defined and if you can be methodically trained line upon line precepts upon precepts i like how the bible puts it it says now are we the sons of god but it does not yet appear it is not the reality it is the appearance we're talking about that now it is a fact that we are the sons of god but the manifestation of the same for our world to see will be subject to training when you hold a seed watch this when you hold a maize seed or beans or whatever it is you hold it and you look at it 
there are many trees you are holding are we together but you cannot eat the fruit there you, you don't you cannot even count the number of trees that are in that seed but you have to plant it water it and patiently wait and then it grows and now starts to bear fruit and many other seeds come from that one seed that is how it is are we learning now let me charge us along let me charge us along three secrets equipping the saints haven't drawn our minds to the fact that if believers are not trained they will not excel as far as this faith adventure is concerned I want to talk about three areas and three things that I truly believe are kingdom secrets that can turn anyone for that matter to become a giant in the spirit number one the power of a systemic prayer life please write it down the power of a systemic prayer life please underline the word systemic many people teach on prayer many people pray many people talk about prayer but many believers have not been able to draw the richness that is captured in the prayer ministry largely because their prayer life is not systemic in acts chapter 3 and verse 1 we are considering the power of a systemic prayer life acts chapter 3 and verse 1 let's read together ready one to read now peter and john went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer somebody said the hour of prayer the hour of prayer there was a time dedicated it became a ritual it became habitual they even named it the hour of prayer you see the power of prayer it's not just in the activity alone but the consistency the consistency of that fellowship now I've taught you that prayer achieves many things in the life of the believer let me quickly do a recap for you there are four four things that prayer achieves in the life of the believer according to scripture number one prayer is a channel for fellowship and transformation fellowship and transformation I think that is Luke 29 did I get that right and verse 9 or thereabout the Bible says and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering so prayer was given primarily as a tool for fellowship that culminates to our transformation transformation is the name given to the process that makes you christ-like in experience he says my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you so that is the first biblical assignment of prayer as a tool for fellowship and transformation number two prayer is a tool or a platform to make petitions and obtain requests prayer is a platform to make petitions and obtain requests the bible says that should be matthew chapter 11 i believe and verse 24 jesus was teaching on the subject of faith and then he veers off to talk about prayer mark is it mark help me mark mark 11 24 he said what things soever ye desire when ye pray did i get that right believe that ye receivest them and thou shalt have them so there is a prayer request called what things soever no matter what it is it says when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them hallelujah Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 we read it earlier on it says to be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication let your request be made known to God so prayer is a platform for making petitions and obtaining requests number three prayer is a platform for creation and spiritual legislation prayer is a platform 
for creation and spiritual legislation. God is not the only person you talk to when you pray. In prayer, you can talk to things. In prayer, you can talk to spirits. You are given the liberty to use the platform of prayer and create possibilities in your life. Are we together? Even God who called the things that be not as though they were. You can create spiritual possibilities. You can make decrees. It says, and thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established not unto everybody, unto the one who made the decree. Thou shalt decree a thing. Your Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. So prayer is a platform that allows you to create possibilities, program possibilities in your life. Finally, prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession. Prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession. Warfare, establishing the victory of Christ over your life and warding of the forces, the arsenals of darkness that continue to fight the speakings of God over your life. These are, among others, I believe, the four biblical assignments of prayer in the life of the believer. But you see, your prayer life will not be rich until it is systemic in the case of the apostles they had the hour of prayer and the bible calls it the ninth hour in the life of jesus we find his prayer life the bible gives us a picture of his prayer life in mark chapter 1 from verse 34 look his busy schedules and see how he was able to carve out a systemic approach to his prayer life mark 1 let's begin our reading from verse 34 mark 1 34 help us media the bible says and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils this is from his crusade now he suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him 35 we're reading to 37 the bible says and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed this was a a a habitual practice of jesus because his day was full of activities you need to picture the life of Jesus. Everybody thronging upon him, moving from city to city. And he did not have that time to pray in the afternoon. But early in the morning, it was a habit. The apostles also started learning it. The Bible says, Simon and they that were with him followed after him. Jesus was not just prayerful. He was systemic with his prayer. Look up please. Many believers are not able to excel and enjoy the wealth and the blessings that come with the prayer ministry because we have not created a systematized approach to prayer we largely freelance our prayer or motivated by the reality of a situation that challenges you then you may now give some attention are we together Believers were never designed to pray only during emergencies. Believers were never designed to pray only during needs. Believers were never designed to pray only when you have a program. The Bible says in Luke 18 and verse 1 that he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 17, he says to pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night. It means be consistent in your prayer. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. Let's assume that you are a student in any of the higher institutions of learning here. Because of the nature of your life and the face of life that you are in, you may have a bit of luxury of time because your focus will largely be schoolwork and then you have the luxury of time. And it is possible to pray at any time once you are not having your lectures you may have fellowship or just your personal time but now fast forward imagine that that same student now becomes a worker say in an oil and gas company you use that student template they will first suck you out of the work are we together now and when they throw you away 
both your spiritual life and your means your stream of income will both dry up you have to reinvent a system that now suits the current context of your life this is the problem with many believers you had the luxury say for instance you were not married at that point you had the luxury you could lock up yourself for three days you didn't need to obtain permission from any man as a woman you can lock yourself and pray now you are married you are a wife probably a mother you have other responsibilities that luxury of freelancing your prayer life is no longer there because being prayerful would not be an excuse for failing in your family life are we together so you have to now create a system it takes intelligence to pray effectively not just spirituality that intelligence component is where believers have thrown it away we just have a blind zeal there needs to be intelligence when you study your life and you find out the way that God works with you if you are a leader and you have a lot of commitment towards people you would want to maximize your night times you want to maximize your mornings in principle I have found the night times to be the best for me for various reasons because it affords you a greater sense of focus are we together now there are moments where you can take dedicated times out maybe a whole day but generally speaking there are certain levels of growth i'm saying this sincerely ask any great leader they will tell you the convenience of prayer right now for them was not the way it used to be years ago if you are to be honest because of the responsibilities that have come upon that person you can be praying and someone comes to disturb you now you are living in the same house with five of your relatives and while you are praying the one who is not born again is enjoying himself and playing one song and just when you want to position your your heart and you are in the same house you can't drive them remember you are trusting god for the salvation of that person are we together or while you are trusting god to increase you now you live in a house where you are a christian and you are surrounded say by non-christians and certain liberty of expression that you may have you understand you can shout you can roll you can do everything now you are limited in many ways listen believers you will not grow spiritually and you will not be rich in your prayer life until you study your life and in partnership with the holy spirit design an effective template that insists that you do not compromise on prayer regardless your schedule because the devil is a master at giving you a justification i'm busy you know the way my life is and two days becomes one week becomes one year and before you know it you will simply be admiring the days when you used to be prayerful and there are consequences according to scripture when believers do not invest time to pray you have bought the potential for quality fellowship with the spirit of god and then all of these things that i mentioned will no longer be found in your life is someone learning you want to gain mastery in training any believer you have to train them to understand the power of a systemic or systematized prayer life there are people who come to pray and you know they say a lot of childish things plus Jesus minus Satan and that's the end of it that's the prayer or they say what we know to be the Lord's prayer as a pastor of a ministry that's your entire prayer life no you can't walk that way are we together no wonder the life that should emanate as we speak as we preach and as we lead is not there and you find out that there's a lot of energy that is being dissipated but the life component that is ignited through a rich prayer life is not there for instance you can hear a preacher preach preach sincerely and what he's saying is not a lie except that your spirit bears witness that there is information but there is no life and life there does not mean flying up and down there is there is the strength let me tell you a healthy secret place cannot be hidden no it's not about the huskiness of your voice it's not about auditory there is a signature of life that is upon your speakings you cannot pretend a healthy prayer life no you cannot act and pretend a healthy prayer life believers hear me zaria hear me if you do not understand the power of prayer 
you will give evil the right and the credence to reign over territories when men do not know how to pray and subdue territorial powers we are talking of advanced levels of prayer where it's not just needs you are standing like a watchman over a territory and insisting allowing the things that must happen within a territory or disallowing it by the authority that you have are we together yes sir there are controlling spirits across territories that manipulate the thinking of people, causing them to act in certain ways that are antichrist. It is the responsibility of the believer within that territory. Did the Bible not say in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus teaching from verse 13 to 16, it says you are the light. You are the light of Zaria. Believers hear me. It says you are the salt of the earth. The, the assignment of the salt is twofold one to add taste or value number two to preserve you are not salt if you are not contributing towards your prayer life in the name of Jesus we stand here as salt darkness will not reign over Zaria it's not just when you gather as a prayer group it's not just when you gather here in Koinonia it must become a lifestyle to make your contribution as far as sanitizing the territory to make the purposes of God find a free course it says I Paul desire to come to you once and again but Satan hindered us if Satan can hinder men, he can hinder things. Things like many manifestations of favor coming to you can be hindered. Is someone learning? I made up my mind that my environment will always remain an environment of pro-advancement. An environment that makes it conducive for the purposes of God to find expression. Believers, hear me. In the name of Jesus, you must have a systematized prayer life. As a father over your family, you must have a systematized prayer life. You see, our parents used to practice something called morning devotion. I know that that may not really be enough to give you a robust spiritual life, but it was better than nothing. Even though it was just five, ten minutes of just sharing briefly, it was consistent and many of us the bank of spiritual knowledge that we have came from that experience you would find out that they just spent 10 minutes in a day in truth i will tell you you will need more than that if you want to attain stature in the spirit but it is still better than nothing and don't forget that they were working with the limit of the knowledge they had so god would vet them based on the knowledge available for them they made the most they made sure that every month they bought you devotional remember or every year there were others that were yearly there are others that were monthly they insisted whether you liked it or not and remember sometimes you will not do it for two weeks then you will repent like i used to do and then cover all the ones that you didn't do then backslide again hmm. but now you must get to a point where you have the prayer ministry as a revelation listen prayer is not all about power prayer is about negotiating with the realm of the spirit to manifest possibilities it's not just all about anointing uh -uh. Are we together do not allow the devil to destroy your loved ones under your watch do not allow the devil to to invade a territory under your watch do not allow yourself to be bankrupt listen in the name of Jesus may it never happen that the time will come in Zaria where there is no longer evangelism people are not being saved people are not being healed people are not being delivered that the churches are now facing all kinds of pain persecution no increase in membership may it never happen under our watch in the name of Jesus it is our responsibility to stand and to pray it says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore hallelujah to pray we are preparing for a UK conference right now and there is prayer happening every day every day non-stop until the conference time because taking a flight and going there 
is not what you need. God is sending you as an agent of revival. There are age-long spirits that predated even your arrival. You're not just going to stand there and speak English. No. The Bible says every time you see men, there are two laws working in them. Number one is the law of sin and death. And the assignment is to walk in partnership that there is a superimposition. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It will take more than good English. It will take more than a good sermon. It says, I, when I came to you, I didn't come with the excellency of speech. You want to see nations submit to the power of God? You want to see the manifestation of the power of God sweep nations? We are not just talking about having a car and a house and personal needs. We are talking of a time where by reason of your alignment, God can trust you with the destinies of a generation. Hallelujah. The Bible shows us three levels of trust in the Bible. The least level of trust that God can accord a man is to trust you with things. Giving you things is the least level of trust in the spirit. Things like money, things like access to things is the least level of trust. The second level of trust is trust over destinies. God can give you the trust and make you a custodian. He can trust you with destinies, men, nations. The highest level of trust as revealed from scripture that God can accord a man is to trust you with his program. Literally, he puts you to spearhead his agenda that God will say for the next 10 years, this is what I want to do in Zaria and I'm putting you in charge of that program. I hope someone is learning. So celebrating that you have access to things is wonderful. But I'm telling you that does not weigh much in the spirit. Oh, I have money, I have a good job. Thank God for that. But spiritually speaking, mm -mm. you find this in Matthew chapter 25. And there are other synoptic accounts. We're not going there for the sake of time. You find a situation where the first thing he gave them was things, talents. When they were faithful, he now made them head over nations. That was the reward they got. Are we together? Yes. So Jesus looks at his disciples and says, I'm sending you as witnesses over Jerusalem, Judea. But among all of them, there were a few people who were trusted with his program. Salvation to the Gentiles was given to one man. Salvation to, it was not given to a group. In as much as all of them were sent as witnesses, when you mention Paul, when you mentioned John, when you mentioned Peter, these were men who were trusted with programs, not just things. Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but he cannot bear them now. The many things he wanted to say was what Paul now brought. If Paul was not there, we would not have an opportunity to hear the many other things Jesus wanted to say. Do you know what it means to read the Bible without Paul's contribution? Number one, you will not understand redemption reading the Gospels. It will take the Pauline epistles to bring perspective. Because as at the time Jesus was dying, they had not received the Holy Spirit in them. So their spiritual understanding was still there. It was Paul by the Spirit that began to give a sound exegesis of everything that happened. The whole book of Ephesians, six chapters. It was Paul that began to tell us that we were raised up with Christ. Not even Jesus preached it. Remember what I taught you. Three levels of trust. Things, destinies, God's program. And in every territory, God has a program. That's why people come to territories and leave. Every, please listen, this is a very prophetic message. There is something God is doing in Zaria now that he did not do 10 years ago. But that, that program can be aborted until he finds men that move beyond the realm of being trusted with things to be trusted with destinies and to be trusted with his program every believer who grows holistically you will see these three phases of trust you will start seeing certain manifestation things are working a car is coming this and that and sometimes we get distracted and we feel that's the highest level no 
there are higher levels of ranking and authority in the spirit where God now trusts you with certain destinies and say under your watch this family must not die under your watch this must not die then a time comes when he measures a thousand cubits and he can trust you with his program now he can send you to regions and reveal to you what he wants to do here I am in your presence do it's to me what you want I'm open before you Lord do to me what you want listen ladies and gentlemen my assignment is to continue to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to help you see that there are vast dimensions as far as the work of the believer is concerned that Christianity is not just limited to having things and enjoying things and saying, no oh, this is working for me there are superior needs that even God has the need to see the world evangelization the Bible says and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness and you do not have to be a pastor I have told you prophetically speaking God's end time program is separated into three groups there are prophetic intercessors then there are those who are sent into the cosmos then there are the kingdom financiers this is the tripartite formation of the end time army and every one of us here will play one two or all of these roles I repeat again prophetic intercessors these are people like Anna the prophetess you may never see them out but they are the ones who pray the program of God to come listen carefully and then number two we now have those who are sent into Abarakata I just sense a strong anointing very strong anointing as I just began to talk about this very strong anointing those who are sent that includes pastors apostles those who go that includes entrepreneurs please do listen to my message redefining revival i have said that the revival that is coming is not about the pulpit alone because when you read the bible it was not only elijah that walked there was daniel there was deborah and all these mantles who find expression in this army so it's important if you are esther don't go and take elijah's training it will corrupt what you will become you must know you must find your parallel in scripture and then follow the training that leads you if you are esther and you do elijah's training you will abort your mission in the palace and if you are elijah and you now do the training of say gideon no you identify the kind of training by the similitude of the mantle that is following you so if you are esther start looking for Haggai and Mordecai these are the two people that can make you become the Esther that marries Ahasuerus if you are Elisha make sure you do not make a mistake of looking for Haggai he cannot train Elisha he can only train Esther the challenge is that many of us are going through different patterns of training that does not suit what we are to become so prophetic intercessors that was a digression those who are sent into the mission field and then kingdom financiers the Josephs of Arimathea's the body of Jesus is hanging upon the tree and no every the prayer warriors ministry Anna the prophetess had finished the ministry of the disciples and the women had finished it was only the ministry of the kingdom financier who had influence and had a virgin tomb Joseph had influence with the government of the day and he had a virgin tomb. If Jesus were not buried in the tomb, we would never be able to say, Oh grave, where is your sting? And oh, oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? He had to be buried in the tomb. If we have only prophetic intercessors, the program of God cannot happen fully. If we have only people going to the mission field, this was the mistake that missionaries did when they came into Nigeria. Most of them did not have 
proper prophetic there was no rich bank of prayer and intercession and they just came with sincere evangelical zeal and some of them as soon as they they landed certain lands they did were not even given an opportunity to preach they slaughtered them and they destroyed them because before their arrival by divination the powers that be had seen their coming and because they did not have capacity they brought a sincere gospel but they neglected the formation even Jesus before his arrival prayer had to go before him learn this pattern you can use it for this is true even for any church the ministry of prayer the ministry of doctrine the word and administration and leadership then the ministry of kingdom financing every time this tripart this tripartite pattern is compromised there will be problem in that organization there will be problem in that ministry so if you have people who only pray in a ministry they will never grow because the ministry of doctrine that matures believers is not there you see that now and then if you have a ministry that does not have support systems arums and halls that hold the hand of the man of god they cannot hold the rod but they can hold the hand of the one holding the rod is someone learning so my first admonishment in training you is that you must develop a systematized prayer life it is it is your assignment under god to study different models in scripture different models through modern history there are prayer giants who have joined the cloud of witnesses men like ew kenyon em bounds you can study their 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 approach to prayer and then there are those that God has granted privilege we who are now alive and are making a contribution you can study the Bible says to follow them there are always them who through faith and patience have obtained the disciples said we are not just following Jesus for his crusade we want to follow him to that secret place and see what really happens that produces the miracles at the crusade ground the secret of great men is in what they do before the manifestations not the manifestations no. number two the second thoughts that i want to share with you in receiving training tonight is how to be built by the word let's do that very quickly so a systematized prayer life a methodical prayer life where you allocate time or a range of times and as much as possible obtain grace and be disciplined to not compromise on those times and you will watch how your life begins to grow every time you invest in prayer something happens within your spirit man now the ministry of the word how to be built by the word let me tell you this there there are three dimensions as far as being built by the word is concerned just because you have access to the word does not mean it will build you no there are many people who are reading scriptures there are many people who have access to the word but they do not know how to be built by it in acts chapter 20 and verse 32 the bible says and now brethren it says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace the bible says that it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified it first builds you then it gives to you are we together in acts chapter 6 and verse 4 still the early church when there was problem between the Grecian women over tables, the apostle said, get 12 people and would we'll ordain them and allow them to handle the matters of welfare. But we will give ourselves continually, the Bible says, to prayer and to the ministry of the word. We will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. I have found out, listen, and by the grace of God, I have studied my Bible and I have studied I. I like to study many of the generals who have joined the cloud of witnesses for some reason I have come to a point to trust the purity of their experiences because they produce 
dramatic levels of results from their spiritual experiences and I've been able to distill three dimensions of your encounter with the Word of God in order to build you number one is the study of Scripture you want to be built by the Word you must study Scripture the Bible says study to show yourself approved unto God it didn't say wish it didn't say read it says study there is a difference between study and reading the purpose of reading is awareness the purpose of study is understanding there is a difference it will take more than awareness of scripture to be a giant in the spirit you must study scripture so that is the first way to be built by the word you must study scripture number two you must listen to scripture they are not the same the study of scripture and listening to scripture are not the same let me tell you according to the bible the work of the believer is dependent on your eyes and your ears and your mouth there are components in a believer that must participate in your growth many times you will hear the bible say faith comes by hearing it was not a mistake he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches if your ears are not participating in your word encounter i submit to you you cannot be built by the word please try to believe that i'm not deceiving you there are many people who study scripture but they are still not able to be built by the word holistically because they have ignored it i hope you know that before the study of scripture became a possibility it was first hearing holy men wrote before they wrote they had and they saw to write are we together now that model has not changed jesus spent time speaking to them in fact in the parable of the sower watch this the bible lists four kinds of soils and it says the seed is the word of god it says the seed that fell on good ground are those that heard the word they heard the word they received it they acted upon it and even though they heard it they still produced three levels of results 30 fold 60 fold and 100 fold if you are together if we are together say amen you must study scripture if you want to be built by the word number two you must listen listen to scripture and scripture related resources like teachings scripture and scripture related resources I have in my phone here um, an mp3 of everything Jesus said in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation everything the Bible records that Jesus said was distilled and sometimes that's all I listen to I want to hear the very words that the Bible says from Jesus and something happens miraculously it happens to your spirit man listen this is one of the ways that God trained us when we began with God listening those days people would put their cassette it was it was a model many people have compromised on it now you would almost see believers like mad people because once they were moving they, they always had their earphones listening to something a worship to usher you very strong worship and then maybe a message and then maybe a teaching you would almost know that this is a believer's room because there will be a sermon playing while they are cooking a sermon playing now we have ignored the place of hearing and that's the reason why the faith dimension it takes to work mighty things is no longer there i submit to you you just hear the word allow it sink into your mind you don't just hear for memory you hear to transport it into your subconscious mind are we together yes hearing sometimes you can fall asleep while you are hearing and in the realm of the spirit the hearing continues and your consciousness is being trained now when you wake up you can be having a vision while you are awake and understand the dynamics because something was quickened in your spirit if you can be sleeping and yet still participate how much more when you are awake now god can speak to you as a preacher you can be standing here and you can be caught up in the spirit and your organs of interacting with that realm of possibility has been trained by hearing 
have you listened to a message before and then you fall asleep and the message is still playing and sometimes it now becomes graphic you are now acting out that message you may wake up under an intense manifestation of God's power I remember those days we, I used to listen to the entire 12 hour CDs of Charles and Francis Hunter how to heal the sick I would sleep and I would it would play again and again and again you put it on repeat until the battery runs down let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus let this mind be in you at age 12 he went to the temple he was asking questions and listening and when Satan came to him at age 30 he said it is written it is written it is written There's a man called Dr. Nasir Sadiqi. Many of you may have heard about him. And he had a, a case, I think it's called shingles or so, years ago. And he was diagnosed with an acute case. It was a terrible case. Had brought out boils and swellings in his body and he was left for dead. They had told him, the doctors had concluded, do your best it may not work and he made up his mind as a project with his wife that he was going to listen to scripture as he was taking drugs the same way they say take um, Panadol you know two in the morning two in the afternoon that was how he was listening to scriptures for two years non-stop and that devil dried up and left him till today he's still serving the purposes of God you see I told you that results are preachers there is a sermon only results can preach and when you see people who have gone through the valley of the shadow of death and have come out victorious it is arrogance to argue with them are we together I know what the Word of God can do to a man I give you this as a project submit yourself to hearing scripture gather relevant teachings gather relevant materials especially the Bible on tape or mp3 is free it's online go and get it and you listen to it it may not be easy for you to read the 66 books but you can hear the 66 books you can hear a chapter in 20 minutes and repeat it again in one hour you have had that chapter you will think nothing is happening until the day adversity strikes scriptures will shoot out of you like weapons it's true please listen to what I'm telling you most people are not built by the word because number one we do not study the word number two we do not listen to the word and then number three we do not speak the word that is the third level of being built by the word the confession of the believer according to scripture is a very powerful thing the confession of a believer the confession of a believer listen ladies and gentlemen you have to learn this the confession of the believer the Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so is that in your Bible let the redeemed of the Lord say so let the redeemed of the Lord say so let the redeemed let the healed of the Lord say so many people are not given to the confession of scripture and if you do not confess scripture let me tell you the truth there are many prophetic realities that may never happen in your life the Bible says he have not because he asked not and then part of asking is not just to say give me your faith declarations in the name of Jesus I decree and declare the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I be afraid of in the name of Jesus the Lord is the strength of my life I declare that a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side none shall hurt me with my eyes shall I see and I behold the reward of the wicked are we together the declaration of Scripture I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord the blessing of the Lord is at work in my life I decree and declare I am like my own Zion that cannot be shaken but I abide forever do not make anybody make you believe that is just childish Christianity many have negated this to the detriment of their life confession is so powerful Jesus calls himself the word the logos of God And 
and I will not be silent I will always listen I want you to make it a culture to not just pray but know how the saints are built by the word I will repeat it for you one more time the study of scripture the hearing of scripture and word related resources and then number three my goodness my God the speaking of the word like the king that you are he says where the word of a king is there is power in the name of Jesus there is no death and dryness around my life I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit I am a burning and a shining light I go ever brighter even unto the perfect day you are putting your towel to go and bath you may not have had the time to study scripture listen if you are not growing in scripture it means you are lazy because at any given point you can do one of these three if you don't have the time to study you can have the time to hear if you don't have the time to hear you can have the time to speak there is no excuse to not be built by the word most people do not understand this tripartite approach that is the reason why they say i don't have time to study scripture so my word life goes down it's a lie all three should work together don't choose one don't say me I just confess uh -uh. you must study to have understanding you must hear to build your faith you must speak to release your faith to create those possibilities this is what the Bible teaches this is what the fathers did I remember those days I used to read T.L. Osborne's book and you want to get his book on soul winning and healing the sick a, a timeless eternal classic there is a group of, of uh, I think groups of faith confessions that he wrote just joining scriptures to scripture are we together the favor of the Lord is upon me in the name of Jesus Christ Gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my, their, my rising koinonia goes from glory to glory no decline for the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light the realm of the spirit is bearing witness to your responsibility of confession someone open your mouth in one minute and begin to make faith declarations even if it's only one scripture you have make that declaration in the name of Jesus when men say there is a casting down I declare that for me there will be a lifting up is someone praying the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures the Bible says he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul he guides me in the path of righteousness even for his name's sake someone is praying make that declaration it's a faith declaration you are making that declaration by the power of the holy spirit Shanda brakate veretos kia tapalados, krata baka fraska di la parus ke sevrende ke veretos kia ta, e krata paratus kia tale katus kia te. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Let me show you a scripture. I think that should be Isaiah eight twenty. Give it to us. Never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. I want us to read it together. Isaiah chapter eight and verse twenty. Everybody, please read. One to read. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That means there is a way you speak as proof that light has entered you. That if we find you speaking not according to this word, the diagnosis is that there is no light in you. That means those who are the light, there is a way you speak not just a way you study I will never speak anything negative about my life I don't care what the situation is in the name of Jesus I know while I look at the things that are I look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen the Bible says the things that are seen are temporal 
and the things that are unseen are eternal do you believe this walking in abundance moving with the speed of the holy ghost i am favored that i am walking in abundance moving with the speed of the holy ghost i am favored i am walking in abundance moving with the speed of the holy ghost i am favored this is what i believe before jesus died he confessed that he would die and he would come back to life if he did not speak he would have been surprised he would remain in that grave it was that word that guaranteed his coming back what have you said about your destiny you have empowered the forces of darkness because even satan depends on the word of god to operate satan has to hear what god has said to know what to do to believers again i declare i shall not die but live and declare the works of the lord in the name of jesus my hands are blessed my life is a compendium of infinite possibilities in the name of jesus this ministry goes from glory to glory serving the purposes of the kingdom in power and in grace prosperity is my portion the favor of god is at work in me i decree and i declare by the power of the holy ghost i'm walking upon Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost, I am favored. I am walking in abundance. Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost, I am favored. When Jonah was in the belly of the fish, every other thing failed. It was his words that brought him out in the belly of the fish no hope jonah said every other thing I, I can't use my hand to fight the fish i can't use my brain to think my way out the only thing available that can bring me out is my speaking and that fish vomited him and the bible said it was god that caused the fish to swallow him and jonah used his word and came out of that situation to the point that Jesus used the testimony of Jonah as an adumbration of his death. That means the same way it was the word that brought Jonah out. Jesus made a declaration before he entered the belly of the earth. And after three days he rose again. The angels did not come because they wanted to come. The angels are only mandated to respond to the word of God. If there was no word in that equation, the angels would not have a ministry. Can I tell you? Many people talk about angels. You don't tell angels, go and walk. That's not how you instruct them. You, the, the ministry of the angels is activated by speaking the word. The moment the proceeding word comes, they have an assignment. Let me show you something. Can, can I show you something? Revelations 1 verse 1. I'd like us to read it together. One to read. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him, to show to his servants which things must come to pass notice the revelation was what was given and the bible says he sent that revelation and signified it by his angel the angels respond to revelations so as i begin to speak in the name of jesus my tomorrow is great angels like the holy spirit have the power to go into your tomorrow they are not limited by time and space they can go there as ushers doing the bidding of the saints i really believe this when i begin my year i call every month by name and i give it a name i prophesy upon it this week in the name of jesus i prophesy you are a week that delivers favor. My life is all about the purposes of the kingdom. I go about doing good, healing all day that are oppressed because God is with me. The anointing of the Spirit is at work in me. I believe in God's ability at work in me. You speak like this and watch how inferiority, complex, 
all of these things that came from our backgrounds was it not words that programmed you into that state they told you you would not become anything they looked at you and said you are stupid you are the black sheep or whatever kind of sheep they they look for a deformity around your life and name you i like the man called jabez the mother used her mouth and programmed danger because of her pain she called him jabez but that scripture starts with the end of his story and jabez was more honorable than his brethren when you cannot use your hand when you cannot use your brain when you cannot use your feet use your mouth that every other thing can fail I'm no longer slave to fear I am a child I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child of God. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with, with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Zaria, hear me. Do not call yourself what God did not call you. He did not call you a failure. He did not call you weak. Man of God, he never told you you will fail. Your lowly estate may speak to you, but respond with the spoken word. Don't just study it, speak it. That in the name of Jesus, my generation will celebrate the hand of God upon my life. I may not look like it, but the mighty hand of God is upon me. His word is has work in my spirit. There is no limit to what I'm able to do. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Hallelujah. You do not need money in your bank to speak. You do not need money in your pocket to speak. You do not need a big house to speak. You do not need a mic to speak. You need understanding. Let this become your culture as you are trained. To study the word. To listen to the word. And to speak the word. I give you a guarantee. Obtain grace to live like this. And watch what your life becomes. It will look like you held a charm. The beauty and the glory of God that begins to emanate. You are not the first to stay in one room. We all stay there. You are not the first to whatever it is. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak. Men who through faith subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Women who receive their dead back to life. Maybe there's someone outside. Maybe there's someone scattered across, following online across the globe. Can I speak to you? Do not allow anything bring you down. For as long as you are able to speak, let God be true and every man a liar. Do you believe this? This is how to train believers to be masters over life. So next time you see things not going your way, humanly speaking, you may feel that grief and you may lament, but always remember who you are. When you are done with all that lamentation and sympathy, you wear your priestly regalia and you lock up yourself and say, I know better than this. I have been trained. You open your Bible under an intense atmosphere of worship and let that worship be playing while you are studying and the spirit of grace will now unlock the skill. You see, opening the book is your responsibility but unlocking the seal is his responsibility you don't have the power the book must be both opened and the seal unlocked for you to see opening the book is your responsibility but unlocking the seal then he will give you one rema word and with that word you stand up and from the lips of faith you begin to make declarations that don't make sense in the name of Jesus I activate the ministry of my destiny helpers and whilst you are sitting someone who has forgotten you all of a sudden the book of remembrance is open is and it looks like it's just a a coincidence no we program possibilities in our lives based on the word subscribe
starting plans and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 